Uh, we were approved as a formal study group in the IEEE uh, two weeks ago at the uh, IEEE March plenary. We will enter the first stage of uh, really an effort. I'll call it that because it's not officially a project. It's an effort. It's a study group where we will study the problem of 400 gig. At this point, really the, the responsibility of the group is to define what the project objectives are and then to fill out, if you will, the other paperwork, such as the project authorization form, and to respond to what's known as the five criteria. The five criteria are broad market potential, technical feasibility, economic feasibility, distinct identity, and compatibility. And I think for any project, three of those five are, are very typical of what any business would do. Is there a market? Is it technically feasible? And can I do it cost effectively? We'll be in that stage for some time. And it's very important for people to understand and realize that that is the time if you're interested in determining what 400 gig will be to get involved, to provide input. Um, it is a matter of consensus. The IEEE is, is, opens in an, in a tran, an open, trans, transparent manner. Um, so all are welcome to come and participate uh, and to bring their opinions in and then the industry strives to, to reach consensus on where to go. I think I would defer for making any formal statements about that because it really does depend on, on how the consensus builds in the group. What I have done is used the 802.3BA, which was the development of 100 gig, as, as a reference point. That effort took four years. Um, from July of 2006 to June of 2010 was when the standard was ratified. Um, so if we look at that as, a, as an example, uh, and as a future chair, that's what I will most likely do because it, it worked good once. <laughs> um, I, I believe that will probably be some, somewhere in that time frame. It may be a little bit sooner than that because we have at this point settled the rate, uh, which took a lot of time in, in the last project. So mid-2016 to early 2017 would probably be a reasonable estimate at this point. Well, I, I think the 400 gig standard will obviously be faster. It'll be 400 gig. Um, it will be similar in, in essence to the 100 gig standard, meaning that it'll be some sort of parallel lane solution uh, for whatever it is. We're not going to be doing any 400 gig serial in, in, in the near term. Um, so you're probably looking, if you're looking at today's technology and the stuff that's in development right now based on 25 gig type signaling and, and optics, you're probably looking at some sort of 16 lane electrical solution and some sort of combination for, of lambdas and fibers for an optical solution. S to me, silicon photonics is an implementation choice pure and simple. Um, whether somebody chooses to do it that way or not is, is up to that, that individual uh, company. Um, I think it will play a role. I think you know, when, when you look at, to it, um, you, you can see that there, there is a future here. There's a lot of, a lot of possibility. Um, I've had conversations just talking about it from a sheer packaging perspective, which is going to be some of the challenges that we face. So I think it clearly will play a role in implementations. It's not clear yet to me what sort of role that will convey in terms of a standard. Perhaps in, in maybe some of the power numbers that are used, I, I, I don't know. I'd have to wait and see how it gets brought in. But I think it does raise the point, and we, you know, we talked about participation, that those champions, those individuals who feel that silicon photonics has to be an integral part of 400 gig um, if they have figured out where it needs to be in the standards, they need to make their voice heard. I often say to people in, in, as a chair, uh, do not assume that the standard will do what you want if you don't participate or you don't provide input. We are a contribution-driven organization, and people need to understand that. If we look at this from the, the physical layer specifications as well as the electrical interfaces, I believe that there will be a copper chip-to-chip, chip-to-module type interface that gets developed. Um, nowadays, that's Cowie. Um, we, the current specification is, is based on a 10 by 10, and it's looking to go to 4 by 25. Um, that plays a very crucial role in anything related to your, your front panel uh, requirements. So the, the modules themselves provide a, a level of modularity um, 
in, in that you can now put in a, a, mo a module that will, will satisfy copper, a module that will so satisfy multi-mode or single-mode optics. So I, I do believe that we will deal with the electrical interfaces. I believe that there will be a copper cable solution. So for those people who think it's going to be all optics, I've said this many times, don't, don't count copper out. It, it, it always seems to find a way. And I believe multi-mode and, and single-mode solutions will also play a role. I think single-mode is the one that stands out the most because I believe when you look at it from a data center network um, out to the, those, those key points, uh, bottlenecks, if you will, I think that you're going to see those really being more towards the aggregation and core, not the edge. So you're going to, you're going to basically need longer uh, reaches where I think single-mode fiber will play a very critical role.